Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. Today, I'll be reviewing your riffs and helping you out. So make sure you stick around. I'm sure you're gonna learn some new things today and it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you wanna get in on the next round of submissions, make sure you subscribe, you can get into the community tab and then you can see when I put the next call out for submissions in there. So to begin with, we have a submission from Kohler and they said they've been playing guitar for three to five years. The problems they're having is they're unable to make this riff into a song and they would like to improve the harmony of the idea. So let's take a listen and I'll see how I can help you out, Kohler. Alright, so thanks for the riff Kohler. Um, a really cool idea there. I love the Mustang. And um, in your riff there, I can see that you're in 5-4 and I love the little variation and the repetition every single time you played the riff. I think that makes it interesting uh, for the listener there. So to focus in on your problem, you're saying you're having trouble with developing this into a song and also having some trouble with the harmony. So I'm gonna do kind of these things both together. So I've transcribed your riff here into Guitar Pro. And as we can see, we've got this bit of variation for each repeating phrase. In the original one, you end with these open strings here. Um, but what I've decided to do instead is we're going to build up some, establish some kind of motive and we're going to keep repeating. So instead of strumming this chord open, um, I've added this little bit extra to the end of the bar here. So if we listen to the whole thing all the way through. So I think this just concludes the phrase quite nicely at the end there. And then we can cycle back to the beginning there. And I think this really just establishes that this is a, you know, an introduction, a part of a song. So we're gonna play that a cycle of three. And then I thought, well, how can we develop this into the next part of the song? So I, I focused on the part where you're talking about including and variating the harmony here because you, all your introduction is floating around this, um, the tonic chord in different variations of um, an inversion. So we've got this, basically this sound going on the whole time with just various different um, bass notes instead. So we've got like a one with a four in the bass, then a two in the bass, and then back to the tonic. So we're not really introducing any movement in the harmony, so to speak there. We're just floating around this, uh, you know, the tonic chord here, which is completely fine to be honest. It sounds wonderful. So if you want to introduce some harmony, the thing, next thing we can do is introduce some other chords. So in the tuning of D, A, E, A, C sharp, E, we can play obviously major and minor chords, but we also want to capitalize on the sound of the tuning itself. Otherwise, really what would be the point in using it? I had to play around with some kind of progression that we could move to next. I came up with this, this descending pattern that goes through a minor chord here. Minor second to the minor sixth, then to the fifth. And then we wanna capitalize on the sound of the tuning. So I'm gonna bring the open strings into this progression as well. And to establish this change, I changed the last chord in this bar to that fifth chord just adds a bit more character compared to the you know, the tonic that we were using before, because <laughs> I know I just went 5-1 there, so it sounds nice. For example, if we contrast the two. Four. That really grabs your ear right, and it sets up this next section that we're going to go into. So we're gonna outline these chord shapes for my new recommended section here. And we're also going to change to 7-8. I think it just flows nicely with this idea. And I've tried to establish this as like the main part of the song, let's say, a, a kind of a, the chorus. Um, so it's not gonna be as widdly as the introduction. It's gonna be a bit more something for the listener to grab onto here. So we're gonna go through like that. And if I play it on Guitar Pro, it'll play it much nicer than I can for now. <laughs> No, um, I love I put this, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I really like I put this uh, triplet feel at the end of the bar. And now we've got some movement in the song and the harmony, which is what you were looking for, this kind of minor progression. And all the notes that I'm choosing that are embellishing are just the, you know, the strong notes of the chord, you know, the, the one, three, and the five.
I think this is going to get a bit repetitive. The one thing we want to do is the variation in that repetition, which is what I recommend. And that's what we do on the second cycle. Um, I'm throwing in this borrowed chord again, just to grab the listener's ear, you know, something, oh, you know, that's nice and that's new. So it sounds something like this. I'm going to work with the, the dynamics that way as well. I think it just adds variation and the dynamic change as well. It's just going to keep things interesting here. So I'll play it again. I'll loop it on here. And then we repeat that initial phrase again. And then we're going to complete the phrase. As you can see, it resolves nicely back there, that borrowed chord. It's up a wonderful bit of tension and then releases back to the tonic when we go back to this original motive that we have in the introduction of the song. So um, hopefully some of the things are going to help you there, Cola. I really enjoyed this little riff that you come up with. I had fun learning it and transcribing it here. And I'll, I'll send you over a tab and patrons will be able to get the whole tab for this as well. And as well as the other examples that we'll take a look at today. Okay, so moving on next, we have Kurdo. They've been playing guitar for about five to 10 years. And one of the problems they're having, well, they want to expand from a riff more into a song idea. So very similar to what Cola had there. Uh, what would they like to improve about this idea? So adding some variety to the rhythm, they say they get stuck on that eighth note rhythm, you know, one and two and three and four, uh, while finger picking, and also establish a stronger central motive. So I've got my work cut out for me here. Let's see if we can do this. The first thing we'll do, again, is watch Kodo's idea. beautiful Kodo. Um, F-A-C-G-C-E tuning, I take it from the title of the video, but you can tell by the sound of the guitar. There's that one section in there, the, you know, the da -da 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 -da, that descending section, and it really caught my ear and it reminds me of um, the cover just put out a song called Love Spell and it has that same feel of that descending motive. So I think I'm going to take that idea and develop that into a central motive. <laughs> Okay, so moving over to the, the tab here. Uh, thank you very much, Kodo, for providing a tab. You've definitely saved me a lot of work here. And this riff, this opening riff. I can almost play it right now. It really reminds me of like the TTNG acoustic stuff, like Crocodile, and um, I'll forgive you for, for throwing that rock because that dance was quite kind of Funny. I honestly think this is a, a fantastic idea. It's got a lovely flow to it. It doesn't really have that strong pulse, uh, much like a you know a Tim Collis kind of start riff, and uh, maybe Yvette Young as well. We could say um, I like the variation that you put on the second repeat. Um, you know we can see here we change the riff up a little bit, and this always keeps it interesting for the listener. So thank you for doing stuff like that. So uh, to address your concerns, you said you wanted to add some variation to the rhythm. Perhaps you want to make it a bit more. Um, a bit more mathy in that regard. So what I did, I've added another track here. So let me just get that open. So now looking at this file here, the top is going to be the changes and the bottom is the original. So I've kept your original riff motive for the first bar here. And I gave an example of how you could vary the rhythm here um, to stop playing in this like eighth note pattern, which I think is completely fine, but um, we can, you know, vary it up a little bit here. And I was very inspired by um, one Yvett Young style of these quick little riffs. And also we're going to make use of uh, stopping and starting, which is very common in math rock. And we're going to do this with a bit of syncopation. We're going to play on the offbeat. So this idea sounds like this. 
So if I was to play that, I'll play it along with the, the idea here. So I feel like, you know, this gives it some variation, of course, to the rhythm compared to that, you know, the eighth note picking pattern, if I show you that quickly again. So the variation in, in comparison here. And I also added this spicy note here, so out of key, and it really moves chromatically here, steps up to this, um, really grabs your ear, right? I think you can go with something like that. It's a complete recommendation for you here, Kodo, but um, I just want to give you an example of what you could do, how you could start playing, not necessarily on that eighth rhythm. Think about the stopping and starting, and we can use stopping and starting a lot within these four, four bars by just adding some syncopation and making a um, quick kind of riffs using 16th mm -hmm. notes instead, that very, you know, that American, fo uh, um, American football, like that riff there. That's all I've replicated there, right? And I've tried to keep, obviously, the central idea that you established already, uh, but adding just a... And moving on to your other point, you wanted to establish a, a central motive. And I said back when I listened to this, I really... What grabbed my ear was that, you know, this section here, if we take a listen... So I think this, like I said, it re reminds me a lot of Love Spell by Covet. There's one section in that... that you got some fiddly parts going on here and here uh, and again for this repeating motive so what I've decided to do if we're going to establish this as like the central part of the song let's make it let's simplify it a bit and try and make some melody going on here so let's continue that theme we kind of get there then it gets lost because you start to whittle around a bit there so instead I've simplified it on this new version this new recommendation here but just to clarify, we are listening to the top one here now. We'll repeat that again, but we'll change the rhythm, we'll change the melody ever so slightly at the end. So go. reading the tab as I play along here. <laughs> I like to transcribe everything and then hope I can play it on guitar, so if you're wondering why. <laughs> so I like this phrase, and then we'll repeat it one more time. Again, I'm all about varying variation, grabbing the listener's ears is something we really want to do, and we're going to do that again. I'm going to do it math rock style here. We're going to inject a bar of 9-8, and also we're going to go back to that naughty borrowed chord, and it's going to add just a bit of interest. It's really going to grab our listener's ear going out of key that way. So let's listen to it all the way through here. So I, I love that kind of sudden change into the bar of 4-4 four, four here. I think that works very nice for this section. So let me try and play that through. And then you'll hear how we can then, it sets up nicely this, um, to go back to the introduction, the established motive at the beginning of the song. You can hear now that's leading very nicely back into our introduction. So we get this nice, we're going on this journey through the song, right? We've got this lovely um, established section at the beginning of the song that you've written. I love that. Uh, a really, really nice flow to it. And then we're going to go into that that descending um, established motive that we're going to use for the, the main part of the song. We go on this little journey, we get this tension at the end of it, and then we release back into that initial mot motive that you've written. Uh, anyway, thanks for the awesome submission, Kodo. Um, again, you can get this tab. I'm going to email it to you. And Patreons, you'll be able to download this from Patreon. All right, so that's it for today. I had a lot of fun doing this one. I really enjoy helping 
helping you write your songs, craft your songs. This is what I love getting geeky about. And if you want to get any of these round, on the next round of submissions, make sure you subscribe. You've got that bell notification. I hate it when YouTubers say that, but for this one, you're actually going to get that notification when I make the post calling for submissions. I do get quite a few submissions. So if you do want to get your own personalized song um, mentorship, let's say, then you can have a, head over to Patreon. I've got a bit of free time these days, so I'll be helping you out on there. I can only do a limited number in, a, in the month, so make sure you get in there before it gets, uh, gets clogged up. And I'll be doing a, a full work down of your song, I'll be making a riff and also a supplementary video for you like I've done in this video. I want to say thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the content, leave your comments down below and I'll get back to you. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next episode, goodbye. Mm -hmm.